can't oh, in my sleep. sleep. You know what? I did mess up. I got five on it. He's got that show on uh, on the radio station, okay. um, and so I was talking to him, and he's like, "I don't know, I don't know." How I felt about we were, you were there, right? Yeah. And so I was thinking more and more about it, and I didn't actually, um, I didn't actually feel like I liked it. Like I had this weird feeling of maybe I didn't like it, but yeah. then those light bulb moments hit, which unfortunately they're spoilers, so I can't really say them. Oh, no but spoiler here. This is going to be non spoiler oh, okay, for sure, cool, yeah, because cool. it's just out now. Um, do you want to turn it so they can see you a little bit? I'll just move in. Okay. Um, but then they hit, and I'm like, no, like, it's really, it's actually really good. And it's, it's very smart. well crafted, and there's a, there's so much to it that we're going to talk about in a little bit uh, here. Hello, everybody. Got a lot of people coming. A couple nice. love yous. Thank nice. you. Nice. We love you. Hello to too. everybody. Soviet noodles. I see you. I bet you we love you more. Welcome, everybody, to the F word. It is Friday. It is not Thursday. For those of you who are on our live, obviously, you know that. Uh, for those of you who are listening, I hope you're having a great weekend because uh, it should be Saturday at one o'clock if you're getting on right away. Uh, I'm G, and with me is V Big E. No, no, big F. Damn. Big e? Where's, where'd you get the E from? Entertain facts. I was thinking. Oh, yeah. you can just be the big F. Yeah. Ooh, because that's what I give. Or that's the a new one. Big you F. Can, there we you go. Can be the big F. Yeah. The the big <laughs> Fer. Ooh, I like the good teamwork. Right. See. See. I'm not a dick Tube all team. the time. Tube team. Uh, no, it's two a.m. Oh, okay. Is it actually, where do you live? That's two a.m. Where do you live? Um, what's your address? No, don't <laughs> give that away. Give me all <laughs> your details. Uh, social um, security. <laughs> so yeah. So wherever you're listening to, uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Um, 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 we saw a movie last night. That's why we didn't roll, uh, do our live show. For those of you listening, it doesn't really matter to you because it's coming out in your normal time. And we saw us. But before we get to us, let's talk about some other stuff because I think we're not going to spoil it. So no. anybody that's watching right now, anybody that's listening right now, don't worry. We're not going to spoil anything. Also, I'm putting out a video. I just made this little like two minute and a half minute video that I'm going to put on YouTube. So we're going to start releasing the audio of this like we did since day one. Just the audio for now. Once we get better equipment, then we're going to roll it out on YouTube. The whole thing just going for it. Or or we're going to maybe use a phone or something to record the whole thing. But it's really the editing that that takes up the most amount of time. Um, so for anybody that's listening that does do like YouTube and let's say you're sitting at work and you want to listen to it through YouTube, through your computers, we're going to be releasing the episodes now on YouTube. And uh, that way we can – we're at like 875 followers, by the way, huh. or subscribers, and we still get comments. So uh, – and I was talking to my buddy, and With he's like – I don't know. <laughs> um, but we were talking to – I was talking to my buddy, and he's like, yeah, you guys should have just kept rolling stuff out. But I had the honeymoon. I was gone for a month and then getting my life back. Well, Hello, fair, wife. We didn't think YouTube was going to die. And we thought YouTube was yeah. going to die. Yeah, IGTV, yeah. Ah. what the hell is wrong with you, buddy? Like you said mon- monetization in November. It is now March. Has IGTV fallen off? I think like nobody. I the reason I never actually finished uploading uh, the F your feelings. Yep. Is cause I used to get a thousand views on a video. Yeah. And I got three hundred. Like it just died. All the hype died. I'm like, okay, this is not worth it. Because it took me like five hours to make that thing and to yeah. delete a bunch of apps on my phone to actually like. Get my it phone up there. has no storage. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, it was a grind. It wasn't worth it. That's super shitty. Maybe when I get a new phone, I'll upload part two. It'll be a month hiatus. Yeah, man. End game. End game. There you go. Keep going. Keep going. I wanted to just make sure that this thing. Okie doke. I don't know what else we're going to. I don't want to get. I was going to jump into us, but I don't know. Well, well you're we're quarterbacking we're, it like. Uh, sorry. Well, I was going to say we got some trailers. We got the John Wick trailer. Uh, there was a Toy Story four trailer. I saw yeah. that. That's um, the one I watched. Stranger Things. The Stranger three? Things season three seen. trailer. Do you, do you watch Stranger Things? Yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't sure if you did. Yeah. Okay. I uh, I did a review actually. One of the last reviews I did was a Stranger Things season two review, and I liked it. The one thing I forgot to mention was the Stephen Dustin relationship, which I thought was awesome, and it looks like mm-hmm. they're doubling down in this uh, the next season. Um, but I felt there was the two siblings that almost meant nothing, but it seems like they're going to mean more the in season three. No, I know, oh. but like they meant nothing to the group, right? O- only to have a love interest for the one kid, which is fine. 
But I just, I don't know. I felt they focused on them a little bit too much, and I wanted more of uh, everybody else. But that was just me because I'm weird that way. Um, you didn't see the John Wick 3 trailer? No, I'm doubling down. I'm not watching trailers. But yeah. I'll talk about it more with us because I think that's why I didn't like us because I just had no idea what it was about. Okay. I feel like I, yeah. So it's, it's a hit or miss system. It's like Did the Naked Man, two so, or three times. <laughs> okay, so then do you think we'll get to the Us trailers before we get to the movie, weirdly, odd enough. Do you think, uh, someone did mention this already, that the trailers did give away quite a bit? Uh, I only watched the first trailer, so I wasn't sure, but that's why like a lot of trailers have given away stuff where it's just got to the point where it's more fun to me to go into a movie with like no, like no knowing nothing about it and just to mm-hmm. kind of watch and enjoy in the moment. Mm-hmm. But because uh, a lot of trailers nowadays do, like I know Marvel is being more secretive about it and like trying to, because I know they were like really bad for doing it too. Yeah. Uh, so that's why I stopped. But at a certain point too, it's really hard to do a podcast and a fact page because I was, I uploaded the trailer for Endgame mm-hmm. and literally what I did was turn it on, turn on screen recording, push it away and just wait a minute to stop. So, okay. But I don't know. It's just, uh, it's for me, it's just makes the movie experience better because it's movie tickets are so expensive. Yeah. And it's just like, I don't, I want to go in like knowing nothing. I don't know. Well, we talked about it last week with the Endgame trailer. Really, we don't. We still don't know what the hell's going on. No. Um, which was good because you know I'm gonna watch it. But uh, apparently, that was the final trailer I heard. Yeah, I think, and didn't they release a dust trailer today or something or a trailer like? Well, yesterday? like a, more like um, it was like a TV spot. It was like commemorating all the ones that got dusted away, there kind of thing. Yeah. So dust in, they used but, dust in the wind. That'd yeah, that would have been awesome. <gasps> Um, missed opportunity but apparently they didn't a lot of the stuff in the end game trailer is kind of like what happened in infinity war it's not fake. actually in mm-hmm. the movie so and I we think, don't know i think you're the one that brought it up where a lot of the stuff in infinity war trailer is actually end game mm-hmm. stuff so like that whole running scene yeah, that yeah, could yeah. Be it. That well could there be was the merchandise where hulk bust out of hulk buster yeah from infinity war yeah well, there you yeah. go and the hulk buster is now shown they in played promotion. themselves yeah <laughs> Congratulations! You, you played, played yourself. yourself. I need to get a soundboard. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, but uh, the US trailer definitely had a lot of stuff in it that uh, when I was watching the movie, I was like, "Oh, like they went pretty far into the like where they say Endgame is the first twelve minutes, twenty minutes, whatever it is." This seems like they pulled from almost the entirety of it. They didn't give away too too much because you can pretty no. much guess what it's going to be. But at yeah. the same time, though, I will say this: fuck it, let's just go into us. I will say this: <laughs> um, it didn't it showed quite a bit but it still didn't give everything away yeah so that's what i was like okay i saw a lot of this i saw most a lot of this stuff here Mm -hmm. but it didn't actually spoil the movie which is good at least for me what you guys think of the movie so i already told you upstairs i didn't like the movie i just didn't get it which is like it's not a bad movie i just totally like did not get anything i watched a video yesterday and i still like i just don't remember watching the. i don't remember what they said in the video because well, I need to wait a couple of weeks, I think, so someone got to do an in-depth one. Yeah. But yeah, the guy didn't really talk about it. He just talked about the ending and what happened, which I mm-hmm. I saw the plot twist coming. I didn't know what was going to happen. Like, because I thought, like, at the, when I saw that scene, I'm like, oh, I figured one of them had to do something like that. So, yeah. not going to split this as hard, but no, I just didn't, I didn't get it. I thought Get Out was better just because it was more in your face and I could actually understand what was happening more. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't make it us a bad movie because I didn't get the film. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Just to you. Yeah, to yeah, me, yeah. I just didn't get it. Um, yeah, I didn't see that twist at the end coming, to be honest. Like, I never clicked in enough. I was kind of paying attention to something else, I guess. Um, but overall, it just, like, on the horror side of thing, it wasn't that heavy. It was more of just creeped you out. It's like, what the heck? Mm. You had that WTF moments half the time, and that's like, okay, okay. That's pretty much it. Like, for advertised as a horror thing... It is, and it isn't. It just it just plays on the side of horror where you're like, that's just messed up right there, you know. I think it was a thriller, like Hereditary. That's yeah. what I was expecting because they said like this is the scariest movie I've ever seen in my life. And Hereditary had me wanting to walk out of the theater when I was watching it. Like I was done with that movie. I didn't like towards even... the end there. Oh or... yeah, like I was yeah. too much See, anxiety. I yeah, found yeah. the trailer of that Mama one or whatever. The Ma? The yeah, Ma? that was at, like that, that was one was anxiety. more scary to me than the actual Us movie. Okay. So okay. It didn't have to be. Like, it's not bad. It's not a horror film. But, it's just like they overhyped it as a horror film when it's just like a thriller, which isn't a bad thing either. But no, go no. in expecting something else. Did that like when you notice that? Okay, I'm not really scared of anything here. Did that actually bring down your level of uh, of enjoyment, or were you just like because I was like I'm really, switching now to this one line of thinking, not 
you know. I was always like watching stuff because I know like I was looking for symbolism like right from the start. Yeah. But I was like really excited to be like scared on my ass just because it's fun to go to horror movies with friends. For sure. But yeah, it just kind of it took out the enjoyment of the film when you realize, okay, this isn't fucking scary. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, I walked out and we ran into Brett. And like mm-hmm. I said in the opening here, like he had some a lot of questions. I still have a lot of questions. Sure. Um, but today mm-hmm. I was messaging uh, a buddy of mine and he's seeing it tonight. And he was asking me, like, what do you think? What are this? And he's like, did you like it? And I'm like, I think I did. Like the, the, I was leaning more towards I think I did. Mm-hmm. And the more we I wasn't really talking too many details with him. Yeah. But uh, I was thinking about the movie all day today which i think is a good sign like get out i was yeah. thinking about all day hereditary thought about that you're whole just trying to break down hours. what you just watched because you're again you're on the fence of like do i like this or did i think you know it's like meh too mm-hmm. much hype behind it mm-hmm. like maybe that's what it came down to and you were expecting more i was expecting something different well, I mean, honestly yeah mm-hmm. but what i got just made me more confused than anything like on how i feel about it you're right same thing mm-hmm. uh, do i like it do i not well, let's get into. Uh, well, sorry. Ultimately, I really, I do like it. And the mm. more I thought about it, I had two light bulb moments today, and I'm like, I real, I like. It went from I think I like it to I know I like it to yeah. I really like it. Not as good as Get Out. Mm-hmm. Okay. But uh, I was like, I really liked it. I thought there was like a lot of stuff that I missed, and I really want to see it again. Like. Right now, the way that my mind is, I want to see it like yesterday yeah. again. I should like a back to back thing because there's a lot of stuff that I, I just need to to just yeah. see again. You know, plus the I got five on it song just being used perfectly. Oh, as, yes. And like I was actually I went and listened to the original. I saw the music video and all that stuff, and then I received the comments like, you know what? Have, after seeing us or seeing even the trailer, you just know this song is just creepy as hell. It takes on a whole new yeah. meaning now. Well, the, 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 the instrumental takes on a whole new meaning. Yeah, that alone. Um, but. I thought Tony Collette got snubbed for an Oscar nomination last year. Mm-hmm. Lupita Nyong'o better get an Oscar nomination. Yeah, that was the and, dad. No, no, no. The, that's the that's uh, a, a, what was her name? Oh, Abigail, the girl. Uh, or Adelaide? Adelaide Wilson. Adelaide Wilson. Yeah, the the mom. Lupita. Okay. Yeah, Lupita Nyong'o. Uh, Winston uh, Duke. Winston Duke is yes. the dad who played Gabe. Um, <laughs> I think a, uh, a bell is gonna freak out. If a you bell, don't. hello, thank you, goodbye. <laughs> um, aside from the whole family, actually, mm. everybody was outstanding in this. They did because, very well, yeah. As you've seen in the movie, like the family meets their doppelganger. As you've seen in the trailer, sorry, they meet their doppelgangers. Mm. Those, the kids were great, and the fact what they had to act out, their dot like what their doppelganger versions yeah. they had to do, like. They're doing dual roles, like holy shit. But yeah. Lupita Nyong'o, she she was better than Tony Collette. She better get nominated, if not win. I was like blown away okay, by which her. Which one was Tony Collette? Sorry, Tony Collette was in Hereditary. Have you seen it yet? No. You should see it. It's on Netflix. Probably don't watch it by yourself. <laughs> don't. If you watch it by yourself, watch it like morning. But then you still won't forget about it. Probably not. Um, yeah, performances were through the roof. Even uh, even their friends. Like, I like the facial, like they used like with the face, like they oh, had a really good yeah. like facial expression. I wonder the if they use any prosthetics for that, or if, like some some for sure you could yeah. tell, but others if it was just the expression of the actor. I think there was a mix. I think there was a mix. I think when it comes to a head, at some points, I would imagine not so much prosthetics, but I would Im- I, I I can imagine them putting like face swapping and stuff you think because just there's a little bit there's so many going on, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys like the cast? I thought, I thought they like good. I didn't really I don't care about cast but I thought they did a really good job for the film. It was a good matchup at the end mm-hmm. of the day. Like Winston Duke did awesome as mm-hmm. the okay. the dad kind of thing. He had his like ghetto moment <laughs> with the with the bat that was in the trailer yeah, as well. Yeah, so yeah, not yeah, a spoiler, yeah. but like that was pretty funny. <laughs> um, I thought it was like a really funny film too. Like there was a lot of humor moments. It did way more than Get Out for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. yeah, it reminded me of like It's. I would say like okay. it was kind of like mm-hmm. on that level of humor, but it was more of a serious film than It was. But yeah, I I loved how. When you were mentioning the funny parts, because for me at one point, I thought it was almost too funny. There was one point where I thought it didn't land. Okay. Like, just one one joke that was in there that I was like, yeah, kind of like, I don't, but then I'm thinking, I'm like, I don't know if I would react to that. However, watching this movie, it'd be like, I have no idea how I'd react to any of this stuff. Yeah. Um, I felt, I liked that there was two two or three moments um, they, they were going to use jump scares or you're expecting a jump scare and he pulled back and he didn't use it. And Are I there any jump scares? Great. No. Or very, very few. Just if you, like, from the 
the trailer itself, just seeing that family out there, that's not really a jump scare though no. necessarily. It's just like, yeah, but like it so, was, it was, and it wasn't. I guess you could say depending yeah. how it caught you in yeah. the moment. But uh, the score, mm-hmm. oh man, very good. Not just the five on it remix, like mm-hmm. all the music in this, all like the score in this thing was just perfect. Yeah, at least for me, I thought it was. Which was so the five good. on it? Was it the do 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 do? Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, do do do. Oh, doom, that's what doom, it sounds. Yeah. Doom, doom, doom. Pretty close. Doom, doom, doom. Anyways, yeah. Uh, yeah, I thought that was really good. That opening um, scene was just pretty creepy with the, mm-hmm, the drawback. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, and that kind of set, like, he, he, this is okay. This is, this is what, this movie is his sophomore effort, right? So yeah. when you look at uh, certain directors, uh, we'll go back to M. Night's, like, not go back, but we'll go to M. Night Shyamalan. Sixth Sense was his, was his first one. Unbreakable was his second one, but everyone remembers Sixth Sense, right? Mm-hmm. Even though I think Unbreakable is his best movie and everything else is borderline crap in <laughs> on M. Night Shyamalan. Yeah. Um, at least for me personally. This guy, like, not only made a huge staple last year with Get Out, was it last two year? Years. The year before, two years. Holy shit, two years ago. But then he comes over for his second movie with this. Mm hmm. And not only that, like the attention to detail in this movie, because after Get Out, I was paying attention to everything. Like, mm-hmm. and he did a damn good job of things you saw in the two, two or three previous scenes that organically made their way to another scene. And so when it happened, I'm like, oh, oh yes, and like, and it made you, I made me kind of feel really smart that I like paid attention to this stuff. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he's very good with his writing. That's the mm-hmm. definitely Re- smart writing. That's pretty much it. I mean, luckily, even to go back to their skits of for Key and Peele, like how many? He, sure, like sure. that alone. Did was you gold. like that he? Uh, did you like that he kind of harkened back, like he's using his comedy? No, I never roots. realized that was why there's so much comedy. Cause he, like, he was a comedy. Oh, he's 100. percent Like I never liked that. Right I now. swear, like That's most funny though. Most comedians could probably pull off a good horror, you know. Like when Most I think of, of Jordan Peele, like now the first thing that comes to mind is Get Out, like right not away. Key and Peele. So that's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I knew Key and Peele from all his skits like that. So that's mm-hmm. where I harken back. I haven't seen Get Out actually yet. Yeah, it's a very good. So, like but uh, yeah, I see where he pulls all his his little jokes and stuff like that and his humor. So it's smart. The only I I have I don't know if it's negatives I have mm-hmm. or if it's again just questions. There was one moment where I wish um, they wouldn't have explained everything because then it just kind of left me questioning a little bit more mm-hmm. but then there's some stuff in it where i'm like I, I need more of an explanation but then again the more i think about it and the more last night i was like i have more questions than answers. it left you wanting at the end of the day but today i don't have that same thing it i just want to go back and see it and either piece it away confirm most of my mm-hmm. stuff or Think about it in a different way. I've got a bunch of videos saved for tomorrow that I'm going to go and like explainer videos from people much yeah. smarter than me. But <laughs> yeah, long yeah. story short, like, I don't know. Did you guys rate this one? Do you have a rating for it? No, I'd just say I'd recommend it. Yeah. If you like horror films or just like you just like thriller films in general, it's an interesting movie to watch. I I, I'd so. highly recommend they it. They did set up for a sequel, which I hope they don't do. Well, not set it up, but like they could definitely have a sequel. Yeah, that'd be interesting. I don't know if he'd be he's a sequel guy, but he might. Um or, but I think it'd just be great if you just left it at that and just let us wonder for the next I 20, 30 years. pretty much think you will. I don't see... like you're, I, I see where you're saying how they did leave it open for mm-hmm. a potential sequel, but like that would take some interesting writing to get to pull that off and make it as enjoyable. At the end of the day, this was enjoyable mm-hmm. to watch. You were like, everyone were like, what's happening next? What's going to happen? Like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. So... I, I don't think it's quite 100% Rotten Tomatoes. Like... No, like, I think that lasted think, for a little bit, and then this more. No, it's at ninety six right now. Right? Yeah, like which is but initially still, when it first came out, apparently yeah. it got a hundred. I'm I'm completely. I don't really give a shit about Rotten no, Tomatoes whatever, anymore. Yeah. I've been off there. I've been off of them for a while now. Um, but yeah, I I would definitely be in like the. I'd give this like an eight and a half out of ten, maybe mm-hmm. close to it, because Get Out to me was like a nine point two out mm-hmm. of ten, and so like. It's it, it, yeah, it was a very int- like so interesting, really smart. I'm super confused, but I'm confused now in a good way that I've had time to sit and think about it. Fair enough. I want yeah. to say one thing I was impressed with, though, mm-hmm. is that he like went with a totally different tone than Get Out. Because mm-hmm. he could have just been like been played it safe. This is his second film, right? And just like did like a same kind of style show yeah. or movie, I guess. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I will give him that. I didn't get the film, but I am impressed that he went out and actually like did something really different and unique. And lots of people like it. So, well, and I really like the fact that it didn't, uh, it didn't 
play off the exact same theme as Get Out. Mm-hmm. It picked a different one. Yeah. And the the actual allegory of this movie, at least the two or three that I pieced together in my mind, is completely different than Get Out. So when you're looking at like what is it really touching on and what's the underlying con- like uh, social concern that he's looking at addressing, mm-hmm. I feel like it's completely different than Get Out. Both are relevant to their for their own respective movies. They both have a message to say. And he was able to touch on two different ones with two different movies in a really good way. Also, it's shot really well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, most of the times, I don't like close-ups. I'm not a big fan of close-ups. But, man, when Lupita Nyong'o was, like, the one from the trailer, like, there was one from the trailer where she's doing her hands on the side of her face. Damn. Like, they, those were awesome. They had yeah. they had really, really good things there. Um yeah. Yeah, but any, if we go any further, I think we're going to go into spoiler territory. But Probably. <laughs> long, long story short, we're going to definitely uh, – we'll do a spoiler one uh, one day, next week maybe. A week we'll, or two. A week or two. We'll do a full spoiler. Or if we do have time, maybe we'll just do a spoiler, like just a podcast and just sit and talk about it. Um, or we maybe, could wait yeah. till I guess, the next time Nick didn't come. It's yeah. all three of us. Yeah. Sure. But uh, all right. Yeah, that was us. Mm-hmm. I got five on it. Um. What else? What else? What else? Okay, John Wick three. John awesome. Wick. Awesome. That trailer was dope. That was very good. Are you concerned it's going to be too over the top? No, I I expect it. I mean, even from the second one, his kill count and how everything went down was uh was over over the top already. Like you, he he amped up Wick one. Wick one came at like mid for sure right away, and then two. Brought it up even higher. I'm pretty sure three is going to take it to the next step, and as expected, I it won't ruin it for me. And if anything, it'll make it that much better. He's wearing a dress shirt. Why? What is he saying? Because <laughs> some guy said a really stupid There's... comment. It's a good thing they don't read these, and I told him, yeah, oh, I do read them. We read everything. Also, by the way, so we're going to get to your question right after. Yeah, that was a very talk. good question. Yeah. Um, my so in the second one, the most extreme thing that they had in the second one was still relatively plausible. This one kind of concerns me for two scenes in particular. One having to do with the motorcycles. Okay. And then one having to do with the horse. And so it seems like there's going to be, like, he's going to he's gonna reach superhero type. Like, yeah. you know, when Fast and the Furious got to the point where, like, these guys are pretty much superheroes and they haven't decided to call them that. Yeah. The, the Hobbs <laughs> and Shaw thing looks like two, like, literally the bad guy is a soup, is like a super villain. Yeah. It's like he took the, it's a super shredder. Yeah. It's a super Elba. You know what I mean? Basically. So I'm kind of worried that this one's going to be like too far. I'm stoked for it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to miss it. You got to look at here. what's at stake here, I'm though. Super, no, I know, but I'm saying like the stunts that they're going to do. How plausible is it going to be in this world? Now, this world is almost a fantastical world because you have the continental that surrounds it. They're kind of living by human rules where the cops yeah. are kind of like, you know, especially stay the out person of it. where he's like, hey, John, are you Jimmy? out of retire- <laughs> retirement? It's like, hiya, Jimmy. <laughs> um, so my only concern with this is that Halle Berry looks badass as shit. Yeah, that would and, be an interesting dynamic how that rolls out. And like we said a couple podcasts ago, she did a lot of the, she did all the stunts with the dogs mm-hmm. yeah which is that'll be interesting how it plays out um from the trailer though what i and this will probably ruin it for anthony but that's okay i don't care yeah. Trailer, yeah. if you talk about trailer it's a fair game yeah um how it's gonna play out in the storyline because it basically shows that winston might actually go back on his own excommunicado that's what i was uh so that's what i was curious about i was like it can't be before that his hour window no, no. way because Winston's still technically in the park. Yeah. It's still... See, and that's the thing. Like, you see him... It's nighttime is what has been showing us on all the trailers. Yeah. But when he leaves the park, it's probably just barely dusk. Um, or sorry, yeah, I'd like have nighttime. to look at it again. It's all, it's not quite nighttime yet, but it's getting yeah. there. Uh, my get... Hey, Tino. Didn't Tino have a little yes, one? Yes, last week, last Wednesday. Tino, uh, boy or girl? Nicholas. Nicholas mm. with the Greeks way with yes. the K and I K. Oh. Congratulations, Tino. I hope you and your lovely wife are enjoying the new one. And you've got a boy that you can teach boy things to. <laughs> okay. Well, I don't know. Like, you know, it's different. It's Mind you, I only I don't if we if Soph and I decide to have kids, I just want girls. It's weird. I used to always want boys. 
but no. After I'd my goddaughter, I'm like one of each is like th- is awesome. But uh, I don't know something about girls, man. Most of my friends have girls, and they are awesome. There um, you go. Yeah, I don't know. It's balls to the wall, though. I don't know how much that like. There's so many different action scenes yeah. in there. I'm gonna be impressed if they can yeah. pull off. Uh, like it seems like they're gonna have two or three sequences in one full sequence I leading up that. to it because they're they're big, right? Oh, there's tons of stuff. Like you got the high table going after Wick, but it looks like they're storming the Continental, which that's also a no-no because the high table recognizes the Continental rules. Mm-hmm. So them doing what they're doing just to get to Wick recognizes it or abuses it. Probably abuses. Uh-huh. And uh, so pretty much that's why you see perhaps Winston backing on maybe John Wick. Hey, I'm just glad that the the head desk man is there. Hello, oh yeah, Mr. Wick. We have a guest with us today. So this is the last one. Yes. I don't know. I hope they don't do this because John Wick, I feel like, is just good as a trilogy, and that's it. Yeah. Agreed. But the TV show, I think they're still planning on doing the content. I think that'll look that'll be good because then yeah. it might. It, I don't know how far like is it going to be when the Continental first became the Continental. It could be like an origins of the whole organization. Mm-hmm. Wick will probably be mentioned, not seen, not seen, perhaps. Um, I don't know how they're going to plan that. Maybe Keanu's cool for coming back and doing like a few cameos here and there. Just like he's in the lobby, passes the main character who you're following, whoever it might be, if it's Winston mm-hmm. or whatever. But yeah. well, um, he's a TV actor, right? So, I mean, he does, he's on American Gods. He's doing yeah. a lot of stuff, but, you know, it's... Well, if Keanu, I feel like he's one of those guys that just kind of like... Because he's a really generous guy. Like I hear like... I don't know if it was him or true, but he doesn't really like take a lot of checks or something. He just does stuff. No, for the Matrix, uh, he gave all most of his check, if not all, to the visual guys. So I'm sure he just come in just like to stop by. Like I remember, I think it was yeah. the guy in Deadpool two who's the T.J. Miller, no, the Invisible no. guy. Oh, uh, Invisible. The Brad was it Brad Pitt? Brad Pitt. Yeah. yeah, he just like did it for a coffee. That was for Deadpool. Though. Yeah, mm-hmm. Deadpool two. Yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah, saying, yeah. like for a TV yeah. show, I feel like he would just do something like that mm-hmm. where he just comes. Right. And just... But that was Deadpool and Ryan Reynolds. But I, I can, I can see that. I can see him being like, "Hey, I'll come and cameo in this thing really quick." Yeah. Um. Even, even if it is just a pass by that we can. Like see, uh, yeah. I remember Samuel Jackson did that for Agents of Shield like twice. Did he? Yeah, he came in for like a couple scenes. Oh, that's okay. cool. Mm-hmm. Well, Fair I mean, enough. when you're in that world, like, how, if you have everything set up and all you need to do is memorize lines. Yeah. Like you just kind of walk in, you do your thing really quick. If you like your you job leave. enough, you should be able to do it for like just a quick thing for not a lot of money. Well, oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Being how Keanu is, I could see him definitely being mm-hmm. up for something like that. For sure. Yeah. Um, Toy Story 4, did you like the trailer? Yes. Well, I don't know if I liked it. I, I'm excited for the film. Like I'm yeah. excited for Toy Story 4, so I'm going to like I'm gonna like it either way just because yeah. Toy Story was my OG Pixar <laughs> movie or just movie in general. Uh, I don't know. A lot of people were complaining that Andy looks different. <laughs> I didn't really notice it watching it, but I don't understand why they're complaining because they just updated him because old CGI Andy I never noticed looks yeah. ugly, looks mm. awful. Yeah. So I don't know. People are just finding stuff to complain about, but he's older. It's it's like new development, mm. new product. Like, I mean, what does it matter? The kid's not in there half the time. Yeah, so it's, it's like, like it's, it's about about toy the story, toys. not Andy <laughs> story. <laughs> it's about the toys. Yeah. It should be an interesting one. I mean, all th- all three that they've made have been great and they keep getting better. Like they're always enjoyable to watch no matter what. This so. one is going to be very sad. According to Tim Allen. Is that his name? Probably. Tim Allen. But, oh, no. Uh, I could see one of the toys. Why am I? I was just listening to something Tom about Hanks. him. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I don't know what to know. So, yeah, Tom Hanks said he was like, all right, we just were, uh, it was reported that he was crying while reading the final, like, scenes or final mm-hmm. like, lines of the script. Major toys get destroyed, probably, and you'll never see them again. <laughs> Infinity War leads into that Toy Story. They universe. all get dusted. <laughs> we're just going to cry this year. Like, we got Lion King. We got to see Mufasa die in real life. In full HD. In yeah. full, like, full everything. CG. Just, air, like, ugh. You know what I was thinking about? Thank you, Joel Gons. Um, yeah. I was thinking about when uh, that scene when Mufasa actually dies. Mm. I'll be curious to see how they pull off the pullback. Oh, shit. I just hit the microphone. Um, so, you know when he screams no? Yeah. And it pulls, like, yeah, away yeah. from him? I wonder if they're going to recreate that shot because that's, like, that's, like, you looking at Simba as Mufasa as he's going down and he's screaming no. Like, that's a pretty, like, powerful shot in and of itself. I don't see them cutting that out. John Favreau, he's smart. He's a he good smart. He's a good producer, director, whatever his title is. But he, uh, I mean, he gave us Iron Man. Yeah. I, and he gave us the Jungle Book. Yeah. Like, I don't know if you guys saw the live one. Oh, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, it was really good. Um, um You know what I was, I was going to mention last week, and I'm still working on it? D. Cunos. Fan of the show, um, and all around awesome guy. He was mentioning, you know, how we were talking about like how we get kind of newsy sometimes. Mm-hmm. 
Have you ever seen PIT, Pardon the Interruption, or PTI? It's like on ESPN or something like that. I think, oh, no. The, like It's like a bit, though, right? It's not actual. Kind movie. of. like They, they run through mm-hmm. topics yes. 30 seconds at a time. He made a really good com- like thing. It was like, maybe we can try something like that where we like we do have a list of things, but we just run through them like, boom, like 30 seconds at a time and then move on to just discussing. I was like, Fair that's enough. a great idea. I'm still working on it. I haven't forgotten about it. Um, I'm, I'm, it's on the shelf. Soph told me, and she said she was going to ask on the thing, yeah, let me scroll what up. are the three uh, binge-worthy, binge-worthy Netflix shows? Yes, so to oh. quote her exactly, what are the top three binge-worthy Netflix series to watch from each of you? Damn. There's so many. Okay, I'll start. Go for it. Because I have a rotation. Yeah. So I'm going to say number one is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Beautiful. Just because it's very easy. To, like, I love How I Met Your Mother, probably my favorite TV show I've seen. Mm. But Brooklyn Nine-Nine is easy to watch, no thought, and doesn't make you depressed and lo- feel lonely. Okay. <laughs> Second one. Hmm. Damn. So what do I... I watched The Office, which The Office is that's fun a, to watch. That's a great binge yeah. one, too. Yeah. I'd say The Office maybe second. Mm-hmm. Uh, and maybe How I Met Your Mother third, because just those are really easy to watch. They don't really require a lot of thought. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'd say those are top three. Maybe I'll think of some other ones if there's like a notable Sorry. one arrested development's fun too but i would say top three three other ones that anthony didn't say Ooh. now we're gonna add in a oh. pool and they're gonna be nine bastard how many were on your list of mine escape okay, office so you, you gotta pick nine. some other ones no actually oh. how many your mother the office one isn't like one i binge all the time i've only seen it twice through i've only seen it twice um archer I'm gonna say, oh, Ar- so good. Archer's great. I mean, I just rewatched it again, and I mean, I just saw the last season that they put out, and they're short. I just but, I started mean, watching them, but it's one. like it still has fantastic jokes, and I'm like, they're great characters, great execution. Um, Henry Cavill would be a really good Archer. Mm-hmm. Art boss logic. Nice. Henry Cavill, really? Yeah. Boss no, if you see the art, yeah, yeah, it looks pretty good. I'll yeah. try and find it when you're talking. <laughs> it's okay. Really, it's actually um, funny the thing is, Archer's like a. Like supposed to be like this beautiful looking man, yeah. But he's just like the way he that he it, it's just like two different sides. Anyways, interesting. Go ahead. So okay, you said Archer, Archer. I not in order of no, my yeah, favorite. Yeah, yeah. It's just uh, Archer for sure. Binge. Um, son of a bitch. I'm gonna actually have to look at Netflix. Go okay. to yourself. I'm gonna pick two that are recent. Queer Eye. Oh, love it. Great show. Super into it. Uh, and you can binge the hell out of it, and it just makes you feel good about everything. You tear up. This past season had two sisters, like two, like that had a barbecue place, mm-hmm. the Jones sisters. Oh man, that was great. Those women were unbelievable. Mm. Um, the other one is uh, okay. Oh shit! He switches it. He switched uh, Archer to John Hamm. Okay. The, yeah, but... the other one would be uh, <laughs> Soph and I just binged this show called Afterlife. By Ricky Gervais, like uh, he wrote and uh, produced a lot of it or directed whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It is a wonderful show. Like Ricky Gervais in this show, I was like, it's some, it's, it's a, it's a version of him I've never seen before. It was charming. It was heartbreaking. Um, it was funny and I want to see it again. It's definitely worth binging. And then another one I would say, Good Place was pretty good. I would say that's a pretty good binge uh, binge show outside mm-hmm. of the ones that you already said. And Good Place was from the same guys that did Brooklyn Nine-Nine and uh, The American Office and Parks and Rec, if I remember. Michael Schur. So, this, uh, before Vasily goes, we had some <clears throat> comments from I just for some <clears throat> reason it's turned go, off. Go for it. Uh, so Tino says 24. Oh, yeah. Joel Gon said, I'm trying to remember, VeggieTales, SpongeBob, something else. I forget what it was. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never seen SpongeBob. SpongeBob is fun to watch. Just, I wouldn't. Yeah, like, I never re- got into. I it. wouldn't rewatch the full series, but like if it's on TV, you know, just like okay. But yeah, no. Um, Game of Thrones for sure. Oh, see, they said Netflix though. Yeah, so yeah. If it was very specific on Netflix. If it yeah, was like yeah, it overall, oh, that that's the whole different game. <laughs> but for uh, Netflix specific, Family song, Guy. Mm-hmm. I'll, oh, I'll binge watch song. Family Guy. All the American time. Dad. I will add as an alternate. I've never <clears throat> seen American Dad. Yeah, I never. I love American you Dad. To me, so it was like uh, I like American Dad better than Family Guy. You do, hey? Oh, I wow. Like it. Interesting. Else? It's less oh, repetitive in my mind. There's a few of there. Oh, sorry. This show, Babylon Berlin. It's a German show. Yeah. Wonderful. Broadchurch. Heartbreakingly wonderful. Okay. Money Heist. It was our one review that I did that hit over fifty thousand views. Uh, it was called La, La Casa de Papel, mm-hmm. uh, but it's actually called Money Heist. Ooh, great show. Great show. Highly recommend another it. show. I'd say Daredevil season three. Binge that really fast. I I I just say all of Daredevil. Yep. Um, Breaking Bad, of course, but that's not really a Netflix one. 
I, you I, know what? I, it's on Netflix, so I'm going to say it counts. Because actually, I was going to think Netflix was my next one, to yeah. be honest. Like, if I was to say something I binge, I can rewatch over and over. In my in my mm-hmm. case, I would say, yeah, Family Guy, Archer, and probably I can't rewatch Bad. Daredevil. Can't no? rewatch story shows. No, just can't. No, do it. no I can. I could see that. I know um, for some reason, for me, it's Breaking Bad. The last couple of times I rewatched it, it's because I caught it on TV. Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, well, I got to finish the whole thing now because mm-hmm. I'm already here. It's kind of like some movies you see Spartacus. all the time. Spartacus. Okay. It's a star show. It's not a Netflix show. It's on Netflix. Yeah. It is hammy. It is cheesy. And it is unbelievable balls to the wall also. It's like you're watching them and you kind of cringe sometimes at the dialogue. But it's worth it. Please watch Spartacus. Please, oh, please, yeah. please. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's just great. It's just awesome. I just love the hell out of it. One more Blue Mountain State when it was on it. Oh, I was like, you know what? I've I've rewatched that a couple of times. It's it, just funny to watch. Yeah, it it like, kind of makes you want to live that American uh, college life. It's like you could tell they just party and just do do all this stuff. Yeah, pretty much. And then just watch <laughs> the guy that played Aquaman in the series. Just call him Hey Moran. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I watched it the one time, and then I tried watching the Rise of Thadland oh, yeah. or whatever. I couldn't get into Thadland. And even the finale where they did that Field of Dreams parody with the football field, oh, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah they kind of went off the rails. But, you know, um, the guys that created it are kind of dumbasses. At least the one guy. He plays Punchy. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I love it. Oh, okay. He's Schmosby. Oh, and he's in it, too. That's right. Yeah, he's, he's the mascot. Sad. He's Director. the mascot. And then they were the one that were crowdfunding to get a movie done. I don't think they yeah. ended up doing it. Was that Thadland? That was, that was Thadland. That was okay. it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had somebody talk about Endgame. Yeah, somebody asked, uh, who likes Spider-Man Far From Home? And I said, it's not out yet, so how do we know if we like it? Yeah. <laughs> then he said he's excited for Game of Thrones Season 8, which yeah. is going to yeah. be a good weekend, but it's going to suck now because... Well, not suck. It's we a are, we are preoccupied. But for Easter, Easter's that weekend, so yeah. I'll be able to stream Game of Thrones, yeah. but not able to see... I got Endgame. HBO on on for SAS, for access, so mm. I'm PVRing it and watching it after I don't, on full HD. So that was a must for me. We're probably um, gonna have to come over and watch. Well, I'll have a viewing well, party. Nick, will, Nick could watch it too. It'd be Anytime. all four. Anytime. Oh, did um, I just invite a bunch of people to your place? Well, it's not like it's like Maybe. one of those things that you have plans that you're not really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, I don't know where I live. <laughs> no, that's fair. Um, what do we call it? They did release the 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 length of each episode which is and like goes, over an hour each right well the first three kind of tail in like 58 60 60 something and then it bumps up to 80s for the last three episodes because mm. it's very short and it's gonna amp up like crazy so which is why we when we talked about it last time how we said like what we saw in the trailer wasn't only from the battle of winterfell it could be potentially the battle at king's landing where it falls in the timeline who knows but the big thing is, and what I've I've seen a couple, you know, Kit Harrington on Stephen Colbert and stuff like that, and he's like, it's it's likely it's gonna be like right in the middle at the start, yeah. at least like episode two, right at the end could be the start of it, and then all of episode three is the entire battle. So there's your hours worth of fighting going on. What well, they have the longest battle of yeah. like cinema history right now, don't yeah. they? Like this is it's be the longest one, one continuous battle. So I could see it being uh, set up on the episode before it and then it all happens throughout the entire episode which would probably entail the longest standing battle which is all just fighting does non-stop. game of thrones go straight like they don't take a break in between a couple episodes no okay Wait, like no it's oh, just sorry. week after week week after, after week, week yeah. Oh, yeah um i don't know if i haven't seen their schedule i well, think so it's supposed to be it from before. 14 and on and that's like april 14th is going mm-hmm. on but uh i have a shout out to give to herc because he gave me a pretty awesome theory mm-hmm. that uh It'll be Jamie showing up and killing Cersei. And oh, yeah. then Jamie takes off its mask and it's Arya mm. or Aya, Arya mm-hmm. in the mask. And she's the one that does That'd it. That'd be amazing. In front of a mirror, just so she can see that it was her. And she crosses the name off her list and drops the list on the ground and walks away. Oh, there was an actual. She wrote this down. <laughs> <laughs> and then that scene of her running away would be. Um, the, uh, mountain. the mountain chasing her or something like that. He told me that. I was like, I didn't even think about that. And I feel it's pretty good. dumb for not thinking about that. Also, he had another one. Mm-hmm. What does it say? The the lone wolf dies, but the pack survives. Yeah. So how have you guys taken that line? Honestly, it just means that they have to all come together because realistically, they've all been acting like lone wolves on their own. Mm-hmm. Not, you know, they've had their own storyline. They don't like... 
Bran had to go past the thing, become the Three-Eyed Raven. Sansa was stuck where she was stuck. She kind of had to do her own battles and at the mercy of others until she finally gained enough. And herself getting raped. True. Um, uh, Well, yeah, but um, so she had her own thing to happen. Aya went to Bravos because she's like, I did my own thing. John stayed as the night in the night's watch. watch. Lord Commander died. Came back, Lord of King of Winterfell, did but you, his thing. But you're looking at it as like if they're by themselves, they they they're, they're going to lose. But the pack they survives. need to come together. Do you feel the same way? Yes, okay. I feel like more. Well, that's pretty. That seems pretty accurate. Okay, so this is where Herc had another one. You know how there's always that that thing where the Night King and Bran are linked. Yeah. What if the Lone Wolf is Bran that has to kill himself for the pack to survive? The Lone Wolf, being Bran, dies a sacrifice. But yeah. The pack survives. That's fair. One for the many. And that could be, like, they've said it all along since, like, the first yeah. episode. They've been saying that motto. And then when he said that, I'm like, because I've been on your guys' line of thinking, mm-hmm. and I still am. But mm-hmm. when he said that, again, me, the dumbass, is just thinking, like, just looking at it One face track value. minded kind of thing. <laughs> and so he said that, and I was like, well, shit. That's a great way that's, to think about it. That's always been linked. And my thing is, is, like, if he can warg the way he can, there's no reason he can't warg into the, the dragon. Or the Night King himself. Does Worgen go to them? Can he warg into a undead? He's a three-eyed raven now. He's kind of on the next echelon. But did they establish I have no the idea. three-eyed? Because that's the thing. No. The, th- the, the weird thing about superpowers, like OP characters, yeah. is that it's really tough to define what their uh, abilities are. And yeah. so sometimes they go so crazy, and then sometimes they... Dial it dial right it back. back right? It could be a sense of like not realizing what his potential actually is. Can I actually do this? Maybe yeah. he's just staying away because if he find it gets in my head and I get in his, and then it's messed up. Right. So him, him, me, you, him, 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 me, no, me, me, no, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah so I don't know. He, he gave those two. That's I was, very interesting. I, I was both interested by those two things. Um, Wait, before we go move on, it. was it? Oh, I don't know if it was on the live show. If we already talked about this, was it when we talked? Did we talk about how the Night King, like the, the actor, said like he has one target? We it, I mentioned it okay. uh, when we did the whole trailer breakdown mm-hmm. thing, and yeah, he the actor himself who plays the Night King said yes, he has a target, and I think we narrowed it down. It could be the kid he was denied from Crasser, like the last son, and he'll leave, or it could be he's going after Bran. From the very beginning, because you saw he was after Bran before he even tried to go find the kid again. Well, maybe he was after the Three-Eyed Raven to begin with, but he didn't know where he was. And then all of a sudden... And then Bran led him to him. Yeah. yeah. Now that he's Absolutely. out in the open, it's like, come on, man. Yeah. Um, uh, crazy Game of Thrones news, though. Huh? Amelia Clark came out that she had, like, two brain surgeries during the first... Amelia Clark? Oh, Amelia Clark. Amelia Clark. Amelia. Oh, Amelia. Really? Yeah, she had two Jesus. brain surgeries. Like, one kind of... I think after the first season, it was like a brain aneurysm. Oh, fuck. And they got to it before. And then they found another one, but it wasn't big enough. And then finally, it became like to the point where she could operate on it. And yeah. that was all during season three, I think, was the last one. And Damn. So I don't know. It didn't seem... I don't know if her cast mates knew, but this is all brand new information that just came out recently. So... Breaking news on the I, F word. That's crazy to think that we could have not had her as Daenerys. Or, and I know like you maybe don't find her performance that amazing. Uh, we might... No, no, it's okay. Yeah, a dog. monthly thing. Yeah. So I don't know. Like you, you said you like. I think I've heard you mention. You know, she doesn't have anything crazy as for acting per se. Well, what she I just portrays. Don't think, I don't. I just don't but, think she's a good actress. I think for the part, the, what they've written her for, yeah. for her to do, mm-hmm. she's the weakest actress out of all of them because yeah. she just roams around. She's pretty dead eyed, mm-hmm. and she like she has her badass moments. Right. True. Um. I felt she was actually a better actress in the first season than she she was in the subsequent seasons. Coming up, yeah. Uh, yeah. And and then up until she burned the place down again in season six or seven, was it? Remember when she got captured again by the Dothraki? That would have been in six. In six? Yeah. I thought she had a great thing there where she became badass again because, like, it was just the way her, her they wrote her character. So it's um, not her necessarily. It's the writing that was kind of yeah, weak. Yeah, but also she was in that Terminator movie and she wasn't good. She, from what I understand, apparently she doesn't. She regrets kind of doing those action ones. It's kind Probably of everybody like, regrets doing that. Well, movie. it depends how it pans out at the end of the day. I mean, the new Terminator wasn't well received, and there's still For another sure. one coming out. That I don't one, know if I'm she's. So I don't know if for. she's involved at all. Negative. But anyway, so this is like a whole redo kind of thing. But yeah, for any action stuff that she has done, she doesn't. Care for it? <laughs> Have you adopted a bell yet? No, this guy is in my law class. He's so oh. obsessed with us. 
Do you Except ever I yell tell them, a lawyer in class. Hmm? Do you ever you lawyer somebody and yell no. it out? No, I, when we, if we do a case, I'll make sure to do it. I suit up. <laughs> Sorry, it's from the spoiler alert episode, season three, episode five or six. There you go. I've seen that show too many times. Yeah, but that's yeah. why I've grown to dislike it. Over, I've liked things. the ending more than I've seen it. Like the original. The original? Well, I've not liked it, but like came to accept. Okay, whatever. Yeah, I. I well, I saw you. You posted it. that like. The only ending you'll actually accept is that one mm-hmm. that they showed with like just meeting her at the train and then I'm talking about your mother. But I don't know, the emotional road you take even to the end, that enough is for me. The ending with Robin, how it did was like, okay. I just wanted them to not make that last season the way they made it. They should have made the last season like they I, made the last three episodes. Yeah. Like those last three episodes were good, but it was all unearned stuff. Yeah. And like completely like Anyways, I don't want to get into it too much, you know what I mean? Um, did you guys hear about that Russo Brothers thing where, like, um, they were originally thinking of making, like, Thor and Captain Marvel be a thing? Like, some yeah, type first of a draft. love and first draft. I'm confused. I thought, really? they didn't, thought they didn't want Captain Marvel in well, the Well, again, I, I'm stating I was super heated, but it was still, I said it was rumors. Mm-hmm. These were all stated rumors, right? And when they did the first draft, they would have had... they. They would have had planned this before even Infinity War, like because it takes well, years to make. Time. Yeah, they they, but it takes years to make a movie. Even Captain Marvel before Infinity War came out, she was announced and everything like that. They would have had to do the first draft to get the movie well, they going. Announced and everything. Captain Marvel before Captain America: Civil War was called Civil War. So remember, it was called like something else, like Serpent Serpent Invasion or something. Yeah. So <laughs> Serpent Society. Wow. I still don't know. I, I've. I still see a lot of people that are supporting the rumor that they didn't want her to begin with. But anyways, I think if if they made Captain Marvel and Thor a thing, that would have that would be terrible. Yeah, not clear, for, clearly not even, her and him and Valkyrie are gonna get it on. Wow. Obviously. <laughs> but not even for the fact like not even for um for Thor or anything like that. Yeah. You're you've you've made your character the way you've wanted to make her. She mm. doesn't need anybody. So now you're gonna pair her up with somebody and make her be like a girlfriend? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, I think that'd be like backtracking on what you were like Honestly, trying to the make o- in the, the movie. The only one that actually makes sense throughout the whole thing is you know, Hulk and Black Widow. That, no, I hated that. You hated that so much. That See, was so I forced. don't think that was bad. I think it like it wasn't heavy. It they put it in for definitely Ultron more than anything. That's all they put it in. There you go. So it was, it was weak overall, but then it's carrying on. Even you saw in Infinity War a little bit. There's like a spark there for them. But like okay. as for love interest throughout the entire MCU, I don't think it has a place necessarily, other than Tony and Pepper, of course. But that one's nice. There's really no romantic things where you're like it's not like How Much Your Mother when you're like Robin and Barney should Robin and Barney should get together. There's mm-hmm. no like characters that you, yeah. anybody really ships that hard where they're like they're not cry if they don't get together. And then the division and Black I'm I'm glad that's just like a, that was thing? just a thing. Yeah, I'm glad. Okay, I'm only glad that. Um, they did that in Ultron, yeah. Just so they can show, they can give the backstory of Black Widow, where she, where he's like, "You're not the only monster here." I thought that alone, like in terms of character development, yeah, was made sense. W- not just made sense; it was hard. Like I was like, mm-hmm. like I kind of dropped a bit. I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like that's brutal. Like yeah. this is this is some serious fucking shit, right? And then I liked how they cleaned it up in Infinity War by just having her say, "Hi, Bruce," and he's like, "Hi, Nat," and it was just like. You've been doing your thing, and I've been doing my thing. Like, I don't know where the hell you were. But I also thought it was nice that they had that in Infinity or in Thor Ragnarok when he was in the Quinjet and they showed her. So it showed that he still had feelings and it yeah. brought the Hulk or it brought Bruce Banner back. Yeah. Because that's that every time I watch that movie, and I watch it a lot, but every time I watch that particular scene, it kind of breaks my heart a little bit because of the way that. He's screaming, no banner. Mm-hmm. And then there's that one when he slams up against <clears throat> it and he does that scream out. Mm-hmm. And it's like so, like the look, if you pause it, it's so much pain when he screams. And it's just a, it's just a yell, like a, like yeah. a gorilla yell or whatever. Yeah. So anyways, the, I liked how they <clears> – <throat> excuse me. What the fuck was that? <clears throat> Flem. Flem. Um, I liked how they did that. Uh, only – or sorry, how they cleaned it up. Yeah. But didn't double down. But anyways, I think it'd be terrible if Captain Marvel... They've, the, they've been it. smart with any like the love relations. It's made sense for the story. It's been very much in the background. It's not something you have to focus on for too long, and yeah. it's good. I think so. But think, the whole Captain Marvel Thor thing... How, awesome, how crazy would it be if Ant-Man just gets into Thanos' ear and just goes oh, into okay. the giant man? No, I was going to get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've not seen meme. so many of them. It's so great. <laughs> no, that's not the meme, though, G. That's not what people are saying he's no, getting no, into. No. Whoa. Uh, 
Okay, yeah, after this, uh, it connects directly to you. So Joel Gaunt says, do you guys think Atman will bring back Antony with the Infinity Gauntlet? No. 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 Okay. But anyway, <laughs> Atman. Uh, so the meme is Atman's going to climb into, uh, I was going to say Thor, Thanos' anus oh, and yeah. expand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the, think it, I think it'd almost do the same thing, wouldn't it? Like, it'd pretty much destroy him. But it's funnier that way. Yeah. But the one meme I posted the other day where it's like, I don't know, like, you should have gone for the head, and he's like, oh, I'm going somewhere else, and then he just shows Thanos' <laughs> face. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, when yeah. he first gets hit with the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be so funny. See, and, and what's what's really funny is when you break them, like break stuff down like that, it's mm-hmm. like, that's all you kind of had to have to do, like, mm-hmm. is get him in there, yeah. blow him the fuck up, and then that's it. He's done, Even son. he can't handle that. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think you can get back. You can come back from something like no. that. Um, what else we have? Mm. I, don't have I literally don't have much mm. else, but we still have to keep going. Well, we got, we got like 10 minutes to kill. So we got, what, Shazam's coming up in next, is it next week? April 5th. Still good reviews. People are enjoying it. DC's yeah. making its comeback. So I was talking one to G, movie at a time. I was talking to G about this with the premiere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Versus Am. If they keep doing this, I hope they do. Endgame. Mm-hmm. We can see it early and it'll be we'll be able before. to see it cuz Easter won't be affecting it. Do you think we could just be like we're we're the press? Excuse me, <laughs> the F word is coming to pre-screen this movie for uh our local town and fans. No, honestly, do you think that'll work? We should try. I don't it. think that'll work. I they come to Triple One's Pizza what, all the time. What day do you think it would? Uh, it would so be released see. then. If you were to say it, you uh, could go so see. Actually, it if they early. come all the time, what you got to do is you start got to start um, getting your network going and start feeding them like pizzas, and they can give you popcorn. And then you tell them it's like, hey, when do you guys watch this movie? Because it's not going to be the same time we watch it. <laughs> and then that's when you kind of put it together together, and you say. Let's get let's get us the in here. The N word is better. Wow. Entertain news. Oh wow. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> no. Three white guys <laughs> yeah. on the N word. Yeah, no shit. Can you imagine? We it'd be <laughs> that So it's not good. <laughs> let's see. Shazam comes out tomorrow for the preview, which is two weeks before. So if Endgame is the twenty sixth, are we saying? Is that when it yeah. is? Yeah. So it would be the thirteenth of April. That's what? very positive that they're doing it, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um well, thankfully. I I was looking at it, I'm like, oh, is this in Regina too? And it was, so well, the big thing is to, to the biggest takeaway for me is I look at a couple things, especially when it comes to video games or well, any entertainment. When is the embargo up? If they release the embargo the day of the movie, you know something's wrong. Okay. If they release embargoes week before, where they can put out non spoiler reviews, mm-hmm. uh, then that's very positive. That means that the studio has faith in the movie or the game or whatever, right? Yeah. So, uh, like I, I even remember in video games, uh, Assassin's Creed Unity, one of my favorite. I actually really enjoy that game. I did. I've, I've said it a bunch of times. They released the embargo, I think, the day of, and they had a massive patch the night of. Like, was that more of a technical problem than a, than the actual? Well, the game? whole game was broken for a lot of people, unfortunately. Okay. So they had to release a massive patch just to fix some stuff, and it didn't even fix everything. Mm. But they didn't release reviews until after that, so yeah. that it wouldn't affect the sales of the game. That was a tough one because that was a massive undertaking when they did Unity for the scale. The story was pretty rich. It, it holds. Like, I think it holds up better now. And first being the new, the newest game on the new platforms. And, yeah, PS4, it, it, or Xbox One. That yeah. Kind of thing. Well, the other one too is um, it was the first. I think, in in my opinion, it's the only Assassin's Creed game that has legit parkour, like yeah, proper hardcore parkour. Yeah, Odyssey is okay. It just doesn't have the structure for it. You don't need it. No, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that you don't really yeah. need to do much parkour in Odyssey or Origins because no, Origins is next things. to nothing. Like, yeah, you're gonna parkour over a sand dune. Yeah, doesn't work. So we got. I this is. I'm interested in this. Yeah. Joel Gons, what do you think about the new Dora the Explorer poster? I didn't see it. I never saw it. There is a live action Dora the Explorer movie. Dora the Explorer and the Lost City of Gold. I believe it's titled. Dora. Okay. People are freaking Explorer. out over it, and I'm sorry. Like you can go watch the movie, but this is made for kids, so it's not made for you. Calm down. But it's pretty funny. <laughs> I, I thought it was fake. I'm like, I, I didn't even know this was a thing. This one. Yeah. Let's see. Okay. Do you th- what if Dora the Explorer was just like uh, an alternate version of Tomb Raider, and Dora really? was just? What if they make Dora like really Laura. badass in this movie? Can you imagine if she just pulled like just first scene, she stabs a dude in the face. Swiper comes. <gasps> so, like they're at a bar. Swiper comes, stabs his hand. Yes. Swiper no swiping. Explorer is her middle name. 
Wow. I saw a funny meme. Someone Actually, wouldn't the? <laughs> I, was about to, I was about to say, someone commented, isn't it the? Yeah. <laughs> wouldn't the be? <laughs> Hi, what's your name? Dora the Explorer. What's your middle name? Explorer. It's actually Tehe. <laughs> Madam. Wow. Yeah, if she stabs somebody in the first five minutes. I'm trying to think of what movie that I could match up with. Like just Tomb crazy. Raider. Uncharted. No, no, no. I think you're saying like little kids going nuts. Oh. Yeah. It'd be like if Big Mouth decided to go murder people. Speaking of kids going nuts. Good boys. That looks awesome. Yeah, people are hating on really it. I'm no, I think that looks amazing. I saw the trailer for it. <laughs> and it was awesome. My favorite line is when they're like watching those two adults kiss so they can learn how to kiss. Yeah. The guy turns around, hey, Stranger Things, go fuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but people are like, oh, like kids swearing isn't funny. But it's like, like if you talk to middle ki- middle schoolers, yeah. that's how they talk. Oh, and like, worse, probably. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, well, like well, I'm waiting for are. them to drop the N-word just out there. I could see it. Like somebody said, like this, this is an Xbox Live party in real life. No kidding. Uh, oh, we didn't talk about the Disney deal being officially finalized like two days ago at midnight or something like that. Yeah. And Deadpool, Ryan Reynolds is staying because yeah, on Disney's websites, yeah. they show him in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's yeah, the only one. Only one <laughs> survive the snap. Rebooted. You know what else I noticed in that? Uh, I watched that X-Men trailer again because it just kind of popped up. There was like this thing. It was like, oh, the top trailers of the week or whatever. And this was a while ago, but I forgot about it. Uh, they really, really downgraded Mystique's makeup. Like... She doesn't look like the Mystique in any of the other of their movies. Like they just have some like spots on her forehead. Some like I understand that she hated the makeup, yeah. and I can imagine that's torturous to sit through and do. But yeah. like, it looks super cheap. Like it looks like the like not the Toys R Us version, but like the bin at Walmart that's for sale. That's not really Mystique. But they call her like Enigma or something like that. And like she's not blue, she's green, but looks exactly the same. Like one of those like knockoff things. Good news though. Something I read today. Uh, actually, I, I'm going to try and find out because it's an exact quote. But pretty much what, uh, as I explain it, uh, Disney bought Fox. Yeah. And what they did, I'm pretty sure it's right here. Okay. So I'll read this from Pete's Basement. Drew Goddard has signed a multi-year TV deal with Fox TV in the range of 50 to 70 million. As we all know, Fox was just purchased by Disney and the deal is on is for all their platforms. Goddard was a season one showrunner and creator of Daredevil on Netflix. Mm. We reported months ago that the canceled Marvel Netflix shows will relocate to either Hulu or FX. Disney is about to purchase the 10% share of Hulu that Warner Brother owns, which will now give them 70% after the Fox merger. So to recap... They just gave the Daredevil producer a massive TV contract, which extends to all possible Fox channels, which Disney now owns. Hmm. So he's insinuating that Daredevil and those shows will come back on Fox. I see it happening. I'd be super happy if that's the case. And if that was their play the whole time, they played it very slyly. Well, the only downside of it being on net on Fox is that um, it'll be released once a week kind of thing instead of being a bingeable like all at once. Which you can still find anyways. It's not like anybody can't find this stuff. Um, Oh, I have a question. Uh, Do you think there will be a time where when Disney owns any or all TV entertainment, I assume it means all instead of any because they already do, all TV entertainment services. I go back to that meme or that picture of Thanos, of Mickey Mouse with the gauntlet and had all the... Had like yeah, Fox, um, actually, yeah, like Fox, all the stuff. Yeah, gone, yeah. Disney's stones. Disney's essentially the empire right now. They have a Death Star, and they're like blowing up planets and just accumulating <laughs> wealth right now. Like unless the Jedi returns, and they just like there's an uprising that happens, which I doubt it because yeah. you know there's no lightsabers. Um, I I see them just collecting. So what's the next big target then? Apple was it? There, I think I might have read something about talk with Apple. Probably. I. Maybe it was Apple. It there, was, there Apple. was there was something with Apple mm-hmm. um, because a- oh Apple acquired some some other place because one of their producers for one of their shows like a top exec uh, moved over there like they oh. headhunted uh, her. Um, I I don't know man because um, Disney owns also a lot of TV rights like Hulu and um, all those things. I doubt they'll be able to take over Which is Netflix. weird because they have their own streaming service. Why would they buy shares into Hulu? Because then they can just consolidate the whole thing, man. I guess so that's actually they'll get, Yeah, it'll just be you Disney gotta, anyway. You gotta, you gotta diversify and just have like a thousand income streams coming. One thing I like about living in Canada is that 
uh, streaming services like DCU, the DC Universe, and the new Disney one mm-hmm. won't really affect us mm-hmm. because with Titans, they, they our DC sends all their original shows to Netflix for Canada and everywhere else except the US. Oh yeah, because for some reason it's really hard to get like their app out here, so mm-hmm. won't really affect us right away. That's a good point because we, do, I mean, just for the plain fact that they get stuff that we don't and we get stuff that they don't. How I mean, much your get mother? More stuff. All Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. Um. Oh, okay. I was going to bring this up because we talked about it last week. So, we talked about the scores last week, and you weren't here, but I wanted to address it because we talked about the episode before. <laughs> here we go. And so... Uh, oh, yes. Yes, because I rudely uh, told you I told you to F off twice, actually, um, because I didn't agree with your lo- the, the phrasing of your, of your uh, statement. So, you and Nick both agreed that you, de- you definitely prefer scores over soundtrack. Like over a, 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 a like an actual popular song. I didn't or, say. Listen, I didn't. Well, it, it's got to work with sorry. the tone. I want you to give the the argument that you were going to make there before I interrupted you and turned okay. off the show. Goodbye we're, to all you. Oh, by the yeah, everybody there. On the I guess you have to go Thanks on a Saturday and find out what my argument is tomorrow. So all I said was uh, to restate it, restate it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of shows and movies in the superhero genre, after like Thor Ragnarok, I'd say is more, like, I don't know why. Guardians of the Galaxy is a valid point that it really did revive it. Mm-hmm. But Thor Ragnarok, I noticed like a lot of like the Umbrella Academy, Captain Marvel, they always add these like old songs into fighting scenes, which I feel takes away from the fighting scene because it's sure it's like fun to watch like a couple times. Mm-hmm. But I feel it'd be more badass. You had like more like Wonder Woman's theme is one I think of all time. Such like a that great, is a badass. Like you hear that great, shit, it great gets you in. Fucking theme. Mm-hmm. Oh. Like, no song can replace that, which yeah. I feel like they should I kind of stay away from, like, kind of... Because Guardians of the Galaxy, it worked. Thor, okay. it worked. Captain Marvel, it didn't work for me. I, when I, as soon as I watched it, I'm like, I felt this same. doesn't, like, make sense. Like, why mm-hmm. are you doing this? I felt it was very on the nose because it was no doubts, I'm just a girl. And that was very, like, okay, we get it. Like, <laughs> I'm just a girl. Like, whatever. And my, my issue with Captain Marvel was the fact that it wasn't even a good fight scene. It was too jarring. It was too, like, shaky. It was all over the place. Like... I I couldn't focus on what the f yeah. was going on. At least in like the Guardians or Thor Ragnarok, you could see what he's doing. Yeah, like you could see him. Actually, I I saw a guy. He did an interview. He did a review of it and basically said how kind of on on the lines of what you said, how it had no heart, but also it seems that they didn't have the top team doing their editing because the fight scenes were dark. The color yep. was very dim and gray and dark. And it's like gray and green. They did a they did a he did a side by side comparison. I should send it to you guys. They did a side by side comparison of the Wolverine train scene oh, versus yeah. Captain Marvel's train scene. Yep. Night and day. We're talking like 4K versus just 10 eight, 720p. But inside the train, I thought was really awesome with the grandmother doing the flips. But and still stuff. dim colors. And if you yeah. look at how vibrant every marvel thing you just it felt like they just really cut back on the editing for some reason yeah so just to kind of touch on that i guess on why it looked dark you couldn't really see what was going on plus the fast pace and that and that's the thing the guy gave a rating for like the obviously the story the characters and then the editing and he said the editing was probably they did a bad job with it like they too fast scenes mm-hmm. uh really dark so like even the first fight scene where she was with you know and you know i i still it's dark. really like that scene it's good yeah. but yeah. wouldn't it's you want to see dark. a little bit more? they could have done yeah. a little bit better with the lighting well and especially because thor the dark world was so fucking dark in and of mm-hmm. itself we're gonna get back to the scores by the way sorry i, I, I kind of veered you guys off but, but just because we we're on the topic guardians <laughs> of the galaxy super bright and vibrant yeah. our idea of what the universe is like it's bright well, yeah. When Doctor Strange was going through the different things. It's like, man, like there's so many different color palettes and so many, so many different even things. Even the dark world. <laughs> even yeah, even the fucking dark world. Um, yeah, no, I um, that was one of the few things that I, I did yeah. like. My only argument against that mm-hmm. is that the '90s, like a lot of '90s movies, seem to have the same color tone. So maybe that's what they're going for. Maybe that's that's my only thing. When you look back at '90s movies, they have this kind of brownish office Gray. space, yeah, hundred kind of feel. So. Like, I still, I've thought about the movie a lot. I still don't, like, it's still not, I think, I still think it's the the, the lowest tier MCU movie for a lot of reasons. Mm-hmm. But for technical reasons like that, I would, I argue more that the, the CGI towards the end battle where she finally goes, not not when she goes Super Saiyan, after when she's got the mask on, like, yeah. her mouth doesn't look like hers. Yeah. Like, it looks like 
it's putty. Yeah. Whereas Samuel, like they spent all their money on on Samuel Jackson. But anyways, yeah. um, scores, scores. <laughs> My thing to that, to the Captain Marvel thing, or to scores in general. I think because the battles are so short, um, to get a proper score sometimes, like if you don't have a, a properly composed one, mm-hmm. you need time to build it. Like if you think of Game of Thrones, they're all scores and they're all wonderful. The Battle of the Bastards, for instance, um, the part that you know the most where it goes... Right before the charge. Yeah, but there was the part before that where it goes... dun 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 So... Arrows. So I think if you properly do a score, and that's yeah. why it works in longer forms, I because uh, I think you got I, a chance. I'll, like, I'll be honest the, right the now. The timing, the timing yeah. of the battle, I think, sorry, plays a lot because there, if you're not worrying about the timing of it, because last week I said that it's really hard to intercut action scenes and make it work with the timing of the actions. Mm-hmm. Did you find that with Umbrella Academy and Captain Marvel? I haven't seen Umbrella Academy. I just heard somebody like somebody mentioned it too, which made me realize, oh yeah, like I have noticed it a lot. But I haven't seen it yet. I'm gonna watch it after. I, I think you got a chance to kind of rephrase how you said your statement and it kind of worked out in your favor to be honest. But overall how me and Nick came to the conclusion is that it fits for the story. It has to. Mm-hmm. So it's like Guardians, you're you're gonna get a hit song. You're not gonna get you might get their theme. Or you're going to get a hit song. You yeah. know that off the bat. Thor, true. It got only the immigrant song throughout the entire thing. The rest was 100%. Like it, it 99% score. Yeah. 1% of it was the immigrant song. Yeah. So um, it's got to fit with what's going on. And that's it. Like Infinity War, again, the only the only time you saw a hit song was when the Guardian showed up. Because it's that's their MO. What about uh, Iron Man when he comes in with ACDC and Avengers? And that's his MO. Yeah. Like well, the thing is, like when you like Wonder Woman, exactly when you see Wonder Woman, that's a song that appears. For yeah. Captain Marvel, when she goes into like Endgame, is I'm just a girl gonna play when she rolls up on screen? Yeah, yeah. Well, and but well, probably not because uh, I mean they didn't bring in the immigrant song when he came in. Even though there's been some people that have tried that have cut in the immigrant song with Thor landing in Wakanda. Oh yeah, it's actually pretty funny. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think um, uh. A, it was wrong of me to dismiss you so quickly because for me, it's like I, th- I just felt that you blamed Thor Ragnarok mm-hmm. for it, even though it's been. That's why I said he got forever. a chance to rephrase it. Well, the way he did it quick off the cuff, it was just like he was blaming it. But now he said like where it's fitting and he's seeing it a little bit more. But yeah. it's it's definitely something they've been doing for eons, and it's got to work with what's going on at the end of the day. And if it doesn't fit, and and the thing with scores that they're really tough to do. Like I personally, two of my favorite scores in the MCU, aside from like Avengers theme song and stuff like that, is Thor: The Dark Worlds. Like it's called, I think it's called Odin's Son or something like that mm-hmm. from Brian Tyler and Iron Man's theme from number three. That's a good one. Da-na-na. Also from Brian Tyler, yeah. who also did the soundtrack for Assassin's Creed Black Flag. He's a great, great mm-hmm. uh, guy to do it. Um, Man of Steel had a really good one too. Well, DC films in general, like they just have really good scores. I, they do a I good didn't job. like Batman. I didn't like the Batman versus Superman one, for instance, but obviously. The Dark Knight, like the the trilogy, boom, boom, some of the yeah. most incredible, incredible yeah. scores for for the genre. And no, it wouldn't have fit if they had something like uh, the Joker in the Night from uh, Joker and the Thief from uh, what's that band called? Wolf Mother. Yeah, yeah I yeah. love those guys. Uh, well, let me tell you actually, a story about Into the Spider Verse had a really the great sound score as well. But it worked for because it was a cartoon. But they didn't use it for the battles. No. They also, they had it, the song they made directly was... for the film. True. So it's kind of yeah. scored, but modern. <laughs> yeah, I think if... Uh, b- but, like, let's say Wonder Woman's theme is actually a little bit of an anomaly. Same with Iron Man's. That, because it's it kicks off right away. Like, it goes... Yeah. But other scores that you hear, like Man of Steel, it builds and builds and builds to be something. So it has to fit a time frame for it to kick in. Even the um, the Infinity War, Thor coming into Wakanda, yeah. and uh, you just same with the regular Avengers one. Mm-hmm. It's a it's actually a two to three minute track. Yeah, it's called Forge in Infinity War, and I forget. I think it's called Avengers Assemble in the original Avengers one, and it and it actually builds where it goes. Dun, dun. Dun 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 like it, and yeah. but it has to reach that point. So I think that's where like scoring so it So Wonder Woman is like Barney's mix. All high. Oh yeah. <laughs> and and it and it hits and it goes and yeah, it's yeah. perfect for Shut her. But you the heart. <laughs> I think I get it. Like I, I get where you were saying. For me, I guess my thing was just like, why are you blaming Thor for it? Like I said, he got a chance to reword it. So it, it, 
Well, and I got, made I sense. got a chance to say, Anthony, I'm sorry. Okay. There you go. Oh, look at that. But yeah. to be, I, when I said I blame Thor Ragnarok, which I, which I tried explaining, like I didn't, I wasn't hating on Thor Ragnarok because yeah. yeah. Thor Ragnarok, the song. I remember somebody actually did a video where they like the lyrics to the immigrant song actually like really related to the movie. See, and so last week you never Nick, paid attention to that, did you? I don't know. Oh, so see? Nick, what Nick <laughs> yeah. was saying about that last week, I'm like, the song is literally about Vikings and Valhalla. Like yeah. it is. If there was any song to play and with Thor, that's everything the about one. Valhalla is about getting to Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I come from the land of the ice and snow, uh, with the midnight sun and the hot springs flow. Hammer of the gods to drive our ships to new land. Anyways, let's stop this right now. Well then, <laughs> before I get in, get in too deep, um, what else you guys got? Nothing. I've no, not a thing. No, I just uh, what the heck. is not going. I re- I watched. Um, do you guys get ever into the Medici series at all? I saw the first season. See, with, the second uh, season took me Rob a little... Stark. Yeah. And then the second season didn't have Rob Stark. No, it didn't. Had Sean, uh, it had Eddard Stark, though. Yes, that's a good point. Yes, <laughs> so it took, dearest. It took me a while, actually, to get used to the new cast and that kind of thing. So that was a good series in the end, actually. And then I'm, I've been on this like whole Renaissance Italy kick. I watched Da Vinci's Demons again. Now I'm watching The Borgias with uh, Jeremy Irons. So I s- tried watching Nightfall. You never got into it, eh? No. See, I liked it a lot from the beginning. <laughs> I was I was interested in it in the beginning, but then after I'm just like this. There's it's not it's not grabbing me. Yeah, it's just not doing. I'm it more for into me. the period pieces, so it, yeah. usually it'll get me pretty easy. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's it. Go see us, and yeah. if you get a chance, go see it again because I want to see it again. Um, any final closing things for this episode? Gentlemen, no. ended in peace. No, no one yelled at me today. It's true. Oh my this god, actually, I feel so loved. It's quite today a, a it's quite day. a tame one. 155 <laughs> viewers. Thank you, all 155 people that swung by. Uh yeah. So, thank you everybody for tuning in once again this week. This was episode 40. Technically not, because on YouTube we have one. You know what? What I noticed on Anchor is that we actually started with like number 23 or something like that, or 24. Uh, but on YouTube, we have an, like a live show number one kind of thing. So our numbers okay. are all the way fucked up. Perfect. Um, but this is, uh, this is episode, this is live show number 40. And then I think it's episode like 49 or something like that. Because mm-hmm. like we have 49 episodes on anchor of yeah. season one. I'm not actually doing well, We also have like three. your specials with guests too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that adds to the, the total number. Um, that's why the numbers are like, that's why this is number 40. And then the other one is something else. Um, but yeah. So thank you everybody for listening again. Go see us. Uh, make sure you're following entertain facts on Instagram where you can come hang out with us um, on the live show. Like I'm really having a tough time pushing this out right now. Uh, and then also, woo, also follow the Effort Podcast on Instagram as well, where I post uh, when the episodes go up. And a new series of where you guess the quote. Yeah, I'm doing this That's new good. thing where... I like it. How's the format? But Is it okay? It's good. It's just there's other people that get to it before I see for sure. it. So, but sure. uh, yeah, other than that, it's, it's kind of good. Until you don't read the comments cool. before you guess. First come, first serve. Well, it's, it's the true. first comment. Yeah, sometimes it's the first like, comment comes To comment, I need to hit, hit well, the button. Need, <laughs> it's like, we, we don't get that many people that comment on stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been getting some consistent likes and everything, and we went up like 20 people in like a day or something, and then it dropped down to you. But anyways, engage. I release when the episodes go up. If we're going to see a movie and we're switching from Thursday to Friday, if you're wanting to tune in to Entertain Facts to get us on the live show, uh, from wherever you're listening, thank you so much. Well, the for faces listening. from the places. Faces, Who yeah. Knew? I, yeah, oh yeah. Who knew? Bringing Who knew? it back. Uh, that's it. I'm G. V. It's your boy, Big F. Psst, big F's. Yeah. And we're out. <laughs>